Hello everyone, I'm Asam Kiani, Senior Application Engineer with Applied CAX. Today we have a quick yet powerful tutorial on submodeling in FEMAP. In this session, I'll walk you through a complete submodeling workflow from creating a global model to setting up a refined submodel and finally comparing the results. This technique is incredibly useful for engineers working with large assemblies or detailed stress analysis, and FEMAP makes the entire process seamless and highly efficient. As you see, we jumped um, right into creating the geometry for the variable cross-section cantilever beam. The base section of the beam measures at one by two inches, while the second half narrows down to one by one inch. To keep things simple, I want to spend time on material and property naming as we only have one of each. Feel free to use your preferred naming conventions for better organization. Now let's define the material properties. Um, since this is a linear static analysis, we only need Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. Uh, then we define a single solid element property and apply it to the model. Then assigning the mesh attribute to the geometry and define the mesh sizing. A half inch hex mesh is sufficient for our global model, balancing accuracy and computational efficiency. And uh, finally, I'll load my customized view to visualize the mesh density uh, more accurately. With the mesh sizing sets, the next step is to apply a 1,000 pound load at the end, uh, at the free end of the cantilever, along with a fixed constraint at the opposite end. I'm applying both uh, directly to the surface, which makes it which makes it easier to adjust or remesh later if needed. This approach uh, gives us more flexibility without having to reapply loads or constraints um, every time we update the mesh. Even though FEMAP is primarily a mesh-centric preprocessor, it still handles geometry interactions really well, which makes this process more intuitive. Now that the setup is in place, we're ready to generate the mesh and prepare the model for analysis. Uh, before moving on, it's always a good, a good idea to double check the boundary conditions, making sure they're applied correctly. Um, since our global model is relatively simple with only about 60 elements, the analysis runs very quickly. Once it's done, we can move on to verifying the output and checking the results for the initial global model. All right, let's go ahead and create a submodel based on the global model setup we already put together. The first step is to save the current model under a new name uh, that allows us to preserve the original version while giving us a fresh workplace uh, to build the submodel. From there, we start cleaning up the file, removing um, any analysis results, loads, and constraints. This gives us a blank slate to work from and help avoid any leftover data interfering with the new setup. One of the most efficient way to extract the submodel is by slicing the global geometry at the nodes that are relevant to the area of interest. To do that, uh, I'm using nodes from the existing global model mesh to, uh, to define where those slices should occur. Uh, that's exactly why the global mesh hasn't been deleted yet. It, it serves as a reference um, for identifying the, a, the exact region we want to isolate. It helps uh, make the slicing process more accurate and intentional, especially when we're prepping for uh, mesh refine refinement. Once the geometry is sliced, I go ahead and uh, remove any unnecessary components. This includes uh, excess mesh, um, solid geometry that is no longer needed, or anything else that doesn't belong to the submodel. From there, uh, I do a bit of geometry prep to clean things up even further. Uh, this helps ensure the submodel accurately reflects the area uh, we're focusing on and sets the stage for the clean meshing process. FEMAP's tools make this part pretty straightforward and efficient. Next, I apply a finer mesh, uh, finer level of mesh refinement that includes assigning uh, the appropriate mesh attribute and setting the mesh sizing here. I'm going to I'm going with um, 0.1 inches for the element size. This gives us a more detailed mesh uh, than the one used in the global model. 
which is exactly what we want uh, when analyzing localized behavior. And if needed, I can always go in and, uh, and fine tune the mesh even more uh, using FEMAP's uh, meshing toolbox, which gives a lot of control and flexibility. Uh, with everything set, uh, we're ready to generate the mesh. The result is much more refined mesh tailored specifically to this uh, focused area of the model. Um, that and before moving forward, we always uh, there's a it's always a good idea to do a um, quick quality check, uh, looking out for things like duplicate nodes and other mesh issues that uh, might cause problem later on. Now we need to map the loads from the global model onto the refined submodel to ensure it behaves as if it's still part of the full assembly. To do that, the global model needs to stay open so we can directly access and transfer the output data. Inside the mapping uh, tool, we select the appropriate output set and output vector. In this case, there's only one of each, so it's, it's a straightforward. But in a larger model, it's important to double check that you're selecting the correct data set. Um, we're using enforced nodal displacements, which pulls the displacement data from the global model at the interface nodes and maps it onto the submodel. This lets the submodel respond realistically as if uh, it were still connected to the full structure. After mapping, we highlight the affected nodes to confirm everything applied correctly. Just a quick visual check before moving on. Um, next, we apply fixed constraint uh, to the relevant boundaries. Even though these regions are getting fixed, the Nastran solver still accounts for the enforced displacement, so the submodel response stays accurate. Finally, uh, after fixing all these regions, uh, we double check the constraints to make sure the surfaces are selected properly and then with the enforced displacement and boundary condition in place the submodel is ready for analysis. Let's go ahead and run the analysis on the local uh, submodel. Once it's finished we can press F5 to bring up the stress contours and take a closer look at these results. Uh, you'll notice that the maximum stress values are significantly higher compared to the global model. That's because the refined mesh in the submodel captures the stress uh, gradient much more accurately, especially in critical areas that the coarser global mesh might have smoothed over or missed entirely. This is just a simple demonstration, but in a larger and more detailed assemblies, the benefit of submodeling becomes even more important. Uh, it allows you to get highly accurate results without the computational cost of refining the entire global model. Now we can display um, both, both models um, side by side. As you saw, FEMA provides a great level of control when it comes to pre and post processing for advanced FEA workflow, including uh, seamless submodeling integration as well as um, intuitive data mapping and load transfer from global to local model. For more tutorials, uh, trainings, or expert support on FEMAP and NASTRAN, visit our website appliedcax.com. Thank you for your time and I hope you found this tutorial helpful.